Good afternoon. Welcome back to Codex. This summer, many but not all of our talks feature graduate students and postdocs who were nominated to speak by their senior colleagues. Today, we're very happy to have the final speaker in this series, Dr. Longxu Huang. Longxu is currently a postdoc at UCLA, working with Professor Deanna Nidell. She graduated from Vanderbilt in 2019 under the direction of Akram Aldrubi. Uh, Longshu's research is in applied harmonic analysis, numerical, numerical linear algebra, and geometric analysis. We're very happy to have her here today to tell us about some of her recent work in matrix tensor decomposition and their application. Take it away. Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction and the invitation. It's my great pleasure to talk in the CODIS seminar. Today, I will talk about the CUI decompositions and their applications. This talk is based on several projects with my co-authors, uh, Han Chin Chai, uh, Zhe Han Chao and Dian Nido from UCLA, and uh, Keaton Han from UT Arlington, and uh, Jia Qi Li and Tao Wan from Sun Yat-sen University. If some of you have listened to Keaton's talk in March about the, uh, okay, his talk is also about the CUI decomposition. His talk is more focused on the matrix case. So today I will focus more on the transition from matrix CUI decomposition to tensor CUI decomposition. And I will also cover the application of tensor CUI decomposition in robust decompositions. In this talk, uh, I will talk about three parts. Uh, the motivation, why do we consider the CUI decompositions? And then I will talk about what is the CUI decomposition for the matrix case and the tensor case. And finally, I will talk about the application of CUI decomposition on robust decompositions. Okay, now let's move to the first part. Nowadays, the, uh, the data is produced quickly and usually in large scale. One important work is to compress the data so that we can save the data easily and uh, like save uh, as more data as we want, but we don't want to lose the important in information for the data. For example, every day there are hundreds of thousands of pictures to be produced. In order to save as many pictures as we could, we would like to compress the data, but without lose the clar uh, clarity for the pictures. So this kind of problem is just uh, like corresponding to the low rank matrix approximation problem. Another uh, important applications is we, we want, we would like to separate some structured data. Like uh, for example, uh, in, in this video, we would like to separate the background from these videos. So in order to uh, achieve this goal, what we can do is we just uh, stack, like vectorize each frame into a vector and then stack these vectors frame by frame then into a matrix because the background usually is fixed, right? So we can just consider the uh, matrix stacked by the background can be a low rank matrix. And at each frame, you only have like few objects is moving over time. So you can consider the uh, moving up, uh, the matrix stacked by the moving objects can be a sparse matrix. Okay. Uh, so the, so the, the main goal of my talk can be like summarized as how to develop the uh, fast, accurate, interpretable and the robust algorithms to analyze the low rank structured data. Okay, first of all, let me talk about the low rank approximation problem mathematically. So if our data is, is represented by a matrix, assume A is a D by D matrix, and then our main goal is to approximate the D by D matrix by using a low rank matrix A hat. Uh, so how to measure uh, say the A hat is a good approximation for A. So we would measure the distance between A and A hat. We want the norm of A minus A hat can be as small as possible. Like the norm, you can consider this to be the spectral norm or the Fabinis norm. So in order to solve this problem, one natural idea is to consider the SVD decomposition for the matrix A. So if we have the SVD decomposition A equals to U times sigma times V transpose. If we want to find the best rank R approximation for the A, 
then we can just set a hat equals to ur times sigma times vr transpose. However, for the uh, SVD based uh, low rank approximation method, it has some um, uh, disadvantage. First of all, uh, for the SVD decomposition, it's usually to be computationally expensive. For example, for this D by D matrix, if we want to find the best rank R approximation, then the complexity will become to uh, in the order of D squared times R. Another disadvantage for the SVD decomposition is usually the left and the right singular vector matrix cannot preserve the structure of the original data. But the, uh, the data in real world usually have some structures. For example, it can be sparse or the entry can be non-negative. Uh, for the thirdly, like the decomposition uh, in some case is difficult to interpret or give the explanation to the original data. We can we cannot say like uh, you like we only know the eigenspace like u and v, but what's that mean to the original data? Like we need to uh, uh, like maybe do a, a lot of more work to give the explanation. So you like for example in this picture, we just uh, generate n data points. Well, these n data points is come from two uh, different distributions. If we just uh, like uh, represent each data point as a column and uh, stack all these n points, then we have a uh, like two by n matrix. If we uh, just uh, use the SVD decomposition to find the representation for these data points, and uh, let's say the red, the red line. So these two red lines is come from uh, the SVD decomposition. We just uh, like select uh, the first two uh, left singular vectors and then represent it as these two lines. And you can see these two lines cannot catch the, uh, the distribution for these data points. And let's say the right hand side, the blue line, this blue line is comes from, uh, is chosen from the CUR procedure. And uh, from these two pictures, let's say like, of course this one have a better representation for these data points. Right. So you want to uh, you want to like uh, take these three disadvantages for the SV decomposition into account. So we would like to ask this question: For the given d by d matrix, we need to find a better basis or a frame such that the decomposition for the matrix A, like, which let us C times X. We would like to this decomposition can preserve the structure of the original data A, and uh, this decomposition can be computationally cheap, and it's also it uh, is better to do some uh, analysis or some integration to the original data. So how to uh, find this kind of decomposition? The answer is we can choose the matrix C to be a subcolor matrix of the matrix A. As we know, if the because C is a submatrix of A, so of course C can preserve the structure of the matrix A. And the uh, uh, and the, from this decomposition, we can just uh, treat each column of the matrix A as a linear combination of the of the matrix C. So if uh, so, we can just explain the the meaning for each column as like say like how this uh, column will be related with the column you selected. If you know some meaning for the matrix A, then it's of course easy to get some idea for the original matrix A. And, to comp uh, and we say this is computational cheap because if you know the C, if you want, want to find X, so one natural thing, we can set X to be the C to the inverse times A, okay? Then the question is why, why not just uh, also take the subcolon into account? So this, uh, this idea just uh, produced the CUR decomposition. So next, we will move to the CUR decomposition. Let's see what is the CUR decomposition. So for a given D by D matrix, we would like to select a subcolon, which is represented in red. And we also choose some uh, sub low matrix, which is represented in blue. 
and we set u to be the intersection between c and r, which is represented in purple. Then the CUR decomposition says we can represent it A as the product of C, U to the inverse, and R. If you want this representation to be equal, we need to make sure that the uh, rank of U should be, equals to, uh, be equal to rank of A. Then the question is how to make sure this condition to be true then this just uh, like becomes to a uh, like sampling problem. Uh, in the literature, like we have uh, two kinds of sampling. One is deterministic sampling method. Another one is random sampling method. For the determinist uh, deterministic sampling method, it can ensure us uh, to figure out the minimum columns and the lows such that we have the decomposition. However, the deterministic sampling method is usually uh, to be matched Expen uh, to be more expensive than the random sampling method. If you are interested in the deterministic sampling method, you can uh, read the paper written by Sorensen and Embry in 2016. They have proposed the DEIM method to help us to figure out the uh, minimum rows and columns. And in 2017, uh, Warren, Warrening and uh, Martinson, they also proposed another deterministic sampling method, which called the uh, uh, rank revealing QR method. And for the uh, random sampling method, usually we would prefer to uh, choose the sampling with or without replacement from some distributions over the column and the low index. Uh, well, for, for the random sampling method, Keaton and I have written uh, one paper to make a summary about the random sampling method. If you are interested in uh, the, this kind of sampling method, you can just refer to our paper. For the random sampling method, uh, there are three popular distribution we can use. One is uniform, uniform distribution. Another one is the, uh, the probability depends on the column length and the row length of the given matrix. And for the third one is the, called the leverage score sampling method. Well, in some paper, they also call this is the subspace sampling, uh, sampling method. Uh, for the uniform sampling uh, distribution, we just uh, set the probability to choose each column, each row equals to one OD. Well, here we mean like for a D by D matrix. And uh, for, for the distribution, which uh, depends on the column length is if we choose the JS column, then the probability equals to the norm of JS column square divided the Fubini's norm square of the original matrix A. And similarly for the, uh, for, to choose the ice, uh, ice law. And for the logic score sampling method, if we, uh, we need to first of all have uh, the left and the right singular vector information. Say if we uh, want to find a best rank R, uh, Rank R approximation for your matrix A, then you should have some idea for the uh, truncated rank R uh, SV decomposition for your matrix. And you have the VR, which is a right singular vector matrix, and WR to be the left singular ma vector matrix. The probability to choose the JS column equals to one over R times the norm of the JS, JS law of the VR matrix square. Uh, well, if the uh, distribution is given in advance, then the performance uh, to the performance for using the leverage score method is better than using the distribution uh, which is related to the column length and better than the uniform distribution results. However, if the distribution is not given in advance, you need to like spend extra computation to compute the, these distributions. And let's say for the leverage score method, you need to know the SVD decomposition, which is uh, computationally expensive to compute the distribution itself. However, for the uniform distribution, you don't need to do any computations. You can just set this to be one over D. So this is very cheap. Then uh, if we, uh, for the given matrix, if they have some good property, uh, uh, good property, like for example, the matrix A, the low rank matrix A is an incoherence matrix, then, then the performance for these three distributions are pretty similar. 
So on 2013, Chu and uh, Dimland, they have one result said that if A is an incoherence matrix and its rank is R, suppose we just uh, choose the low index and the corner index uniformly, but we need to make sure the size of the low index and the corner index can be big enough. Then uh, the CUI decomposition, this CUI decomposition will hold with high, high probability. Okay. Uh, let's see, right now we only talk about the exact uh, CUI decomposition. However, in our real world, the data is rarely to be exactly, exactly low rank, but uh, most of the data can be modeled as a low rank matrix, low rank data plus some noise. So we assume the matrix A is a low rank, uh, low rank matrix and the E to be the noise. And uh, when uh, we usually do like, because the data we observe is only A tilde, we want to apply the CUR procedure to A tilde to find a rank R approximation for the A tilde. But you know, you remember that the A, the low rank matrix is the matrix we, want, we care about. So we want to measure how the low rank approximation will be close to the low rank matrix you are care about. So then we just do some perturbation analysis. In our paper, we have like uh, have several different versions for the perturbation analysis. So for here, I just present one result. Uh, if we apply the CUR procedure to the A tilde, and we have the uh, CUR decomposition C tilde times U tilde R to the inverse times R tilde. Notice here, we just force the rank of C tilde equals to R. Then it can make sure the product the rank of the product of this matrix can be less than or equal to R. And then we say the distance between A and the approximates will be bounded by this bound A minus C used to inverse R times uh, some noise term, like the, 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 the noise will be in the, order, in the same order of the noise, the original noise, okay? And let's say uh, by our previous, uh, previous slides, if A is an incoherence, incoherence matrix, then if we choose the low and the corner index uniformly, then the, uh, this term will be equals to zero in high probability. So this means that this term will be bounded by just this term. If you choose uh, the low and the corner index uniformly, okay? Any questions right now? Okay. Okay, the next, uh, let's say, as I mentioned before, we want this decomposition can be computationally cheap. Then let's compare uh, the complexity between the CUI decomposition and the SVD decomposition. If we choose the low and the corner index uniformly uh, uh, for, the, for the given matrix A, then let's say for the CUI decomposition, you only need to compute the use of the inverse part. So uh, if we if A is a incoherence is an incoherence matrix, then we have the R times log D times R log D U matrix. Then the complexity to compute the U as the inverse will be in the order R cubic times log D squared. But to compute the SVD decomposition for a given D by D matrix, the complexity will becomes to D squared times R. Let's say if D is a pretty large number, then you can see that the complexity to compute the CUI decomposition is much cheaper than the complexity to compute the SVD decomposition. Okay, so let's say, now let's make a summary for the matrix CUI decomposition. For the matrix CUI decomposition, you, can, you only need to use the data from the original matrix itself. And uh, this is computationally cheap. But uh, let's say for the, uh, Tensor decomposition, most of uh, like most of the tensor decomposition need to unfold the tensor into a matrix. And uh, this is usually to be computationally expensive. Then the question is, uh, can we just uh, generalize the matrix CUI decomposition to the tensor case? As we know, uh, for the matrix CUI decomposition, it, we have used the uh, rank information. However, for the tensor case, there is Different definition for the uh, uh, different definition for the rank of the tensor. So you, if you want to generalize the CUI decomposition to the tensor case, first of all, you need to fix the rank 
for the tensor, like what kind of rank you want to use. In our work, we just uh, focus on uh, to the uh, focus ourselves to the multilinear rank. Well, in order to give you some idea for the decomposition based on the multilinear rank, now let me give you an instruction for the HOSV decomposition. For a given n mode tensor T, we see it has a multilinear rank R. Well, the multilinear rank means that if you unfold the T, the tensor T to a matrix from the mode I. So here we see this is the unfold operator. And then the rank of the Ti will be equal to R. Okay. Then for the HOS we did composition, we want to decompose the tensor T to be some small tensor C times uh, some small matrix from different modes. Okay. And uh, for the HOS we did composition, we would like to uh, make sure the UI is an orthonormal matrix. Then if you, in the picture, this is looks like you have a big, big tensor, then you want to have a small tensor and then you want to have some uh, small matrix. And then the, the T can be represented as the C and some UIs. Okay, and how to implement the HOS with decomposition? The process is, first of all, we need to unfold the tensor T to a matrix from different mode, and then we can get a matrix. We just uh, apply the SVD decomposition to the matrix. We only keep the uh, left singular matrix, uh, singular vector matrix UI. After we have the UI, then we just apply the UI transpose from mode I to the T, then we can get the, the core tensor C. And then let's see this procedure, like because you want to get the UI, and then if you unfold the tensor into a matrix, then the size for the n mode tensor, like d by d by d tensor, then the size for the matrix will be d times uh, d to the power n minus one. Then the complexity to compute the SVD decomposition will become to d to the power n times r, which is very, uh, which is computationally uh, expensive. Okay, so this is the uh, procedure for the HOSV decomposition. Next, let's go back to our CUI decomposition and how to uh, generalize the matrix CUI decomposition to the tensor case. Let's review the CUI decomposition for the matrix. Uh, we know A equals to C times U slow inverse times R. If we treated the A as a two mode tensor, let's rewrite, uh, rewrite the CUI decomposition into the uh, tensor language. So C times U slow inverse times R, because the U slow inverse equals to U slow inverse times U times U slow inverse. Then this can be related as U times the matrix C times U slow inverse from the mode one and uh, times R transpose U transpose pseudo inverse from the mode two. And then uh, let's say the, uh, the, the row of for this part can be like, can be equal, like you can just uh, change the order, okay? So you can just uh, cheat it the C to be C1 and the R transpose to be C2. And uh, uh, if we write the CUI decomposition in this form, let's go back to this picture. So this means that if we can like uh, determine the core tensor part, the U part, and then we have one way to, uh, to find the C and the R. We only need to extend the U from different directions. So for the C, we just uh, like extend the index for U from the colon direction, then we can get C. And to get R, we just uh, extend the U from the low direction, we can get R. So this observation just uh, motivate us to uh, consider the Chidori CUI decomposition. Okay, so for here, need, we need two things to Dustin to give us this, like we would name, to, for the Chidori CUI decomposition, you can just uh, Google the Chidori join frame. You will figure out why we call this is a Chidori CUI decomposition. So for the Chidori CUI decomposition, the idea is we first of all find the core tensor, this part, this sub tensor, this small rectangular. Uh, and then we just uh, extend this small rectangular uh, from different mode. You see this, this red, 
But as we know, for the for the decomposition, here is some matrix, right? We what we need is the matrix. And how to how do we find the matrix? What we do is we just uh, like unfold, unfold this this big, this tall, uh, tall cube into a matrix from the from that mode, from this mode. And then for the for the U, you just need to like unfold this small cube from this mode too. And similarly, we can like unfold, we can extend the small cube from this direction and unfold the yellow part, and then we can get C2. And similarly for this one, you, you can get C3. Let's see, however, like if you like just choose the uh, low index, uh, the index for, for this small cube, uh, uniformly, like you need like R log B uh, size, right? Then the size for the C will be, uh, the colon index will be R log B square for the three mode tensor. But if you, if, you, um, if you unfold the tensor directly into a matrix, the colon you need is only R log B. So this means that the Chidori CUI decomposition has some redundancy. Uh, so the, this just uh, motivates us to consider another version of the CUI uh, decomposition, which we call the fiber CUI decomposition. The difference between fiber CUI decomposition and the Chidori CUI decomposition, we not only need the small cube, this part, we also like choose the matrix C independently from the choice of the core tensor. We just uh, choose, uh, randomly choose some fibers from this mode, we can get CI. And then we just uh, choose the U to be uh, the sub the sub low matrix of the CI, but with the index uh, II to be the index of the small cube. Okay. Okay, here is the characterization for the Chidori CUI decomposition. For a given uh, N mode tensor A, we assume that the multilinear rank is R to R. As we mentioned before, to decide the the core tensor, we need to need we need to choose some index to decide what is the what is the R. So here we need to choose I I, and then we can decide what is our core tensor, and then we just uh, extend this core tensor to uh to the to a big uh to a tall tensor, and then unfold the tensor. So or we can also consider this as we first of all unfold the tensor A from the mode I, and then we just uh, choose the index with the same index as II, and then this becomes to the cross product of IJ, okay? And then choose the UI to be a, a sub low matrix of CI with the index II. And then for the, this equation is just uh, the, uh, the Chidori CY decomposition for the tensor A. And uh, this result says that if you, if you want the Chidori CUI decomposition to be true, this is equivalent to say you need to find some index ii such that the rank ui equals to r for each i. Or you can also say that you need to find some index ii such that if you unfold a to be a matrix from the mode i, then the ai ii, the rank should be equals to r for any i. And then let's, uh, Let's check, let's look at the uh, condition four again. So this condition four can give us that uh, we can just uh, choose the index ii independently for, for, each, for each i. If we, if we can make the ii such that the rank equals to r, then we can make sure the Chidori CUI decomposition uh, to be true. If the Chidori CUI decomposition to be true, then we can also get that the projection version for the tensor decomposition can also be true, okay? And similarly, we have the characterization for the fiber CUI decomposition. The only difference, uh, we not only need to choose II, we also need to choose JI, okay? The, the JI is independent of II. So we first have a, Core tensor R, and we have a sub, uh, some submatrix CI with the index JI, 
and the UI to be the submatrix of CI with the row index equals to II. The fiber decomposition says, well, you need to choose the II and the JI such that, uh, such that the, the rank of UI should be equals to R. Uh, as we mentioned in the matrix case, because for the real world data, it's rarely to be exact, exactly low rank, but they can model as a low rank plus some noise. And the, the data we can use to compute is only the, the noise data, A tilde. And we care about how is the uh, CUI decomposition on the noisy data can be close to the, uh, the low rank tensor you are interested in. So in our paper, we have uh, different uh, analysis for, for different like uh, for the Chidori and the fiber CUI decomposition. For here, we just present one result where the perturbation for the Chidori CUI decompositions. If, uh, if the, uh, the low rank tensor A is an incoherence tensor, and we just uh, choose the index II uniformly, but we need to make sure that the size of the, of the II can be big enough. Then we just uh, uh, apply the Chidori CUI decomposition to the A tilde. And then notice that in order to make sure the rank for each mode equals to R, we need to force the UI tilde have rank R. Okay, so here's U tilde II, IR. And then we have that the difference between the low rank tensor A and the approximates A approximate will be bounded by this bound. And then let's say this term D to the power N over two times Sigma. This term, you can consider this is just uh, the expectation of the, of the norm of the noise. And then this, this means that the approximation will enlarge the the norm of the noise by this constant. Okay. And here uh, is some comparison between our uh, CUI decomposition and the HOSV decomposition. Our result is uh, marked in purple and black. And uh, the other three is, is some evidence to compute the, compute the HOSV decomposition. Let's say from the top, when there is no noise, then our performance is comparable to the uh, performance for the HOSV decomposition. Even though the, uh, we increase the noise variance, then but our, our, our result will be like lose some accuracy, but let's say the bottom pictures. As the dimension increase, the uh, HOSV decomposition will like, the running time will increase a lot, but for our tensor, uh, CUI decomposition, our running time will like pretty stable, right? For when the dimension D equals to 600, well, here we can see we have about 150 times speed up. Okay, uh, here is the CUI decomposition. Next, let's move to a new topic, the application in the robust decomposition. So what is the robust decomposition? For the robust decomposition, we have the observed data D, which equals to the summation of the low rank data plus some sparse data. Well, for the sparse data, we only need to make uh, the non-zero on can be uh, can be as few as possible, but we have no restriction on the magnitude of the sparse, sparse data. And the main goal for the robust decomposition is we want to separate the low rank data and the sparse data from the observed data. Okay. Uh, usually for the robust decomposition, we need to make some assumptions on the low rank data and the sparse data. Otherwise, uh, uh, for the given given robust uh, given low rank data, you can al always construct some sparse data to make sure that you cannot separate the low the low rank data and the sparse data from the observed. Like for example, you can just uh, consider the low rank data L to be, to, be a to be a matrix. But for this matrix, you only have one entry on the left corner, for example, L11 to be one and other entry to be zero. 
if you add some sparse uh, noise to the to the to the matrix L, then it's it's very easy to destroy the rank information for the L. So it's very difficult to separate the L uh, and the S from the observed data D. In order to avoid this kind of extreme uh, case, we usually assume that the low rank data has some incoherence. What is the incoherence means? So for if if L is a tensor, we consider the HO as we did decomposition for the tensor. And then uh, we want uh, the energy, we want the energy for the orthogonal matrix VI can be evenly distributed. So the mu I is uh, defined to be the maximum of D over I, D over R VI transpose EJI. So you can consider this is the energy for the uh, J i is low for the matrix V i, okay? And we want this it can be bounded by some constant mu. We want the mu can be close to one. And similarly, we also need to make some assumptions on the sparse, uh, uh, sparse, uh, sparse data. We want the non-zero entry can be evenly distributed on each fiber, okay? So the, the non-zero entry can, it, like, uh, the number of the non-zero entry is, uh, is characterized by the parameter alpha. Okay, let's say like for here, this is the uh, general uh, descrip descriptions for the robust decomposition. Let's now consider the case when the tensor is a uh, order two tensor. So now this means that D is a matrix. When n equals two, when this is a two more tensor, then the robust decomposition just uh, uh, becomes to the robust PCA problem. For the robust PCA problem, there are a lot of different algorithms to try to uh, speed up the robust PCA algorithms. In our work, we have uh, developed two different, two different kinds of algorithms to speed up the robust PCA uh, algorithms. So the first algorithm is we try to use the CUR decomposition followed by the robust PCA algorithms. So this means that we would like to, first of all, apply the robust PCA algorithm to two submatrix. And then after we have the, like, we call the result to be denoise low rank, low rank data, we just uh, like use the CUR decomposition to combine these two uh, denoise low rank data. And then for the second one is, we would like to use the CUI decomposition within the iterative robust PCA. So this means that we would replace the, uh, the SVD decomposition in the classical robust PCA algorithms by our CUI decompositions for each iteration. Okay, now let's move to our first algorithm, the robust CUI decomposition. The observed data is D, which is L plus S, and we assume that the L is a low rank data. And our goal is to find a low rank approximation for the low rank data L. Okay. What we do is we first of all uh, uh, sample the index IJ uniformly from the index set D. And then we can get the two subcolon and sublow matrix C tilde and R tilde. Then we just apply the robust PCA algorithms on these two small sized matrix C tilde and R tilde. Then we have two low rank matrix C hat and R hat. And finally, we just use the CUI decomposition to combine these two matrix. The, in the middle, you can consider this is a approximation for the, for the U we mentioned before. Here we just take the U part to be the sub, sub low matrix of the C hat. Of course, you can also use the uh, the U to be the sub corner matrix of R hat, or you can use the average of the sub matrix of C hat and R hat, okay? But in order to use the robust PC algorithms on the small matrix, as we know for the robust PC algorithm, usually they need to as assume some condition on the low rank matrix, of course, on the sparse matrix. But uh, we are not sure whether the submatrix will satisfy the condition that required by the robust PCA uh, algorithms. Then we need to study the property, uh, the how the properties of the uh, 
uh, original matrix L and S will be passed to the sub matrix. Okay. Uh, because uh, in the robust PCA algorithms, the, the original low rank matrix L usually to be an incoherence matrix. And then uh, by our CUR decomposition results, we can, for the incoherence matrix, we can usually like choose the low and the column index uniformly. Then we just study uh, how, how the incoherence and the condition number will be passed to the, uh, to the sub matrix. Here we state the, how the properties will be passed to the sub column matrix. This is also true for the sub low matrix. Let's see these results. We uh, just sample the uh, column index J uniformly, but we need to make sure the size can be big enough. Then we have that the number, the variable beta will be bounded by some constant 10. And uh, for, this, for this line, if you, if you remember the definition for the, uh, for the incoherence for the VC transpose, you can just like, you can just move the square root R over J to the left-hand side. You will notice that this part will be the square root of the mu to C. And then you can notice that this will be enlarged by this number, 100 of condition number of L squared times this, okay? So this will be enlarged by this constant. And then the condition number of C will be enlarged by this constant 10 times square root mu to L times R. Well, these three uh, results holds at the same time with probability at least one minus one over D. And the next we also study uh, how the sparsity properties will be passed to the sub matrix. If S, <clears throat> if S to be alpha sparse and the C is a sub matrix of S, if we choose the J, the color index J uniformly, but we need to make sure the size can be big enough, then the uh, sub matrix C will be two alpha sparsity with the probability bigger than or equal to one minus one over D. Okay, after we have these properties, then we just uh, combine the result between, uh, in the robust uh, PCA algorithms and our CUR decomposition result. We found that we just uh, run the robust PCA algorithms with this kind of iterations. And then the CUR decomposition algorithms will make sure that the estimates L hat and the low rank matrix, the relative area will be bounded by epsilon over the condition number of L with high probability. And uh, let's see, let's compare the complexity for our robust, uh, robust CUR decomposition because we only need to apply the robust PC algorithms on these two small uh, matrix, C hat, C tilde and R tilde. And then uh, by using, choose the low and the color index uniformly, this means that the J index can be in the order of R log D. So this means that the uh, robust CUR algorithms, the complexity will be in the order D times log D squared times R cubic. However, if we apply the robust PCA algorithms directly on the original uh, noisy data, the D matrix, then the complexity will be in the order D squared times R. If D is a very large number, then you can say uh, to reduce D to the log D square will be a huge improvement. Okay. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, for the CUI decomposition, it can also give us some like more in interpretable information for the original data. So we just uh, like apply some uh, deterministic sampling method to the uh, denoise data say hat and try to find the, the most important two frames. And this is the result we found. And you can see that uh, this can tell us this is the uh, most important, this is, this is one frame which well, the light is very heavy. And uh, for, this, for this frame, this is the light which is pretty like dark. <clears throat> and this can be considered as the most important of two frames. And the other frame is just in the middle. So this is the combination of these two frames. And uh, for the last two columns, we just uh, apply the SVD decomposition to find the most two important components. 
And let's say this one, well, this is good. Like this is pretty similar to our, to, to this one. However, for this part, like, especially for these two, two, two pictures, we have no idea what that means. Okay, so this is our, this is the first algorithm. Now let's talk about the second algorithms. For the second algorithm, the main part is the line 11 to 14. We just replaced the SVD decomposition by our CUI decomposition. Even though in line 14, we said we need to compute LK plus one, but in the, in the iteration, the only information we have used is CK plus one, UK plus one, RK plus one. So this means that we don't need to compute LK plus one exactly. We only need to compute the uh, uh, compute on the on the sub matrix, well, which we will use like CK plus one and RK plus one. So you will apply some index to the RK plus one and the CK plus one to find the uh, sub matrix you will use in the next iteration. And because uh, because of the because of the line 14, we don't need to compute this uh, fully. So this can make sure in each iteration, the complexity will be comes to R squared D times log D squared. But for the SVD decomposition, the complexity is R D squared. So this means that in each iteration, we can reduce the complexity from R D squared to R squared D log D squared. So this is also a huge improvement. And then let's see this evidence again, because in this evidence, we only need to replace as we did by the CUI decomposition. So this is very easier uh, to motivate us to generalize this evidence to the tensor case. We only need to replace the HO as we decomposition by the tensor CUI decomposition. So this just motivate us to uh, <clears throat> Develop the RTCUR algorithms. The only difference is we, we, we not only need to compute the submatrix CI, we also need to compute the core tensor part here. But if D is a very large number, then the complexity to compute the core tensor part is much cheaper than compute the submatrix of CI. Okay. And similarly, we don't need to compute the uh, line 15 exactly. We only need to do some computation on the sub, uh, sub tensor and sub matrix. Okay, and uh, then we just uh, do some uh, simulations on for our algorithms. And uh, let's see this these two lines, the red and the and the blue. Uh, is the performance for the RTCUR algorithms. And the, let's say the running time is much less than the other two algorithms. And the, let's look at the AAP. So the AAP algorithm is just uh, is the state of art robust PCA algorithm. IRCUR is our uh, iterative CUR algorithm. And our running time is much less than this one. Okay. And then we also apply uh, our algorithms on the background separation applications, as we mentioned before. And even though, even though all, all these algorithms have similar visual performance, but it seems that our algorithm like have, the color is more consistent. Right? Oh, here, I need to mention that for the ADMM algorithms is some convex algorithm to uh, apply to the tensor, robust, uh, robust tensor decompositions, which is computationally expensive. You can see the running time to do the background separation, we only need three, about three seconds, but for the ADMM, it needs about 800 seconds. And for the AAP, we need like 50 seconds. And let's see Can another, go ahead. For all of these numbers, um, is this all in optimized code or something interpreted? Like, is it MATLAB? Is it C, Fortran? Uh, it's, it's in MATLAB. But uh, okay. for, the, for the ADMM and AAP, we just uh, like download the code from author's website. 
Okay, okay, because it makes a big difference whether it's in MATLAB or C, because mm -hmm. they can do totally different things. Thanks. Yes, that's, that's true. And uh, let's see the application to another video. Uh, like we also have the running time advantage. And uh, let's see the, uh, the performance. You can see we can just uh, separate the background pretty well. We can just uh, clean all these cards. But let's see this result. Like they even cannot separate the moving car, right? Even though for the AAP algorithm, they can like uh, move, move the uh, moving car, but they cannot separate the car here. And uh, we also apply our algorithms on the face modeling, modeling applications. But for these face modeling applications, in order to interpret that, we can, our algorithm is like tensor, essentially tensor-based algorithms. We want to say that our algorithms can like catch the relation in the color mode. We just manually add some block, this small, small block on each color mode individually. So for, the, for this one, we just add to the red color mode. Uh, so this to be added to the green color mode and to the blue color mode. And because our method is the essentially tensor-based algorithms, we can find the face model pretty well. But for other algorithms, because they need to unfold this into a matrix, they can, when they unfold this into a matrix, they, they will destroy the relation between the color mode. So they cannot separate the block very well. Yeah. And there are a lot of things we can do for the CUI decomposition. For example, in our, in our work, we only pr provide the empirical performance for the, for the iterative algorithms. We, right now we have no theoretical guarantee for this one. This will be an, one interesting future work. And secondly, we uh, ju just generalize the tensor CUI decomposition based on the multilinear rank. But uh, we know there are also like CP rank, how to generate the matrix that you are decomposition to a uh, tensor case based on the CP rank. This is another interesting direction. And uh, finally, uh, you can see like uh, for the CUI decomposition, we can just uh, focus on the column and the rows, right? So this can motivate us to that develop another uh, sampling method for the matrix completion. We can just uh, focus on the column and the row. And uh, right now we have some results for the matrix completion case. We haven't, we have no time to search on the tensor completion case. Maybe this will be another pro interesting project. If you are interested, you can like work on that. And uh, here is some references related to this talk. And thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so I'll encourage everybody to hit that reaction button.